Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create those cool looking name tags or name badges with the names already filled in. Actually this one is the final product which you can just print in your printer and it's not done for just any kind of paper. It's done especially for special kind of uh, you know label paper so you can just print it and then just use those individual stickers. You don't have to worry about cutting those with uh, your cutter or scissors, which is pretty cool, I guess. So this time we will not start with the blank document, but instead I will start on this page online labels, which is just a random random page. But uh, you know, there are 10,000 of different pages. What's the advantage of this page is I can just select sheet labels and I want to shop by usage because I don't know what, what I should get. And in, down here there is this organization and ID labels. So I will select the name badges. And I will get a list of all the possible, you know, sizes for the name badges, and they all have four, uh, eight different badges on eight by a half and times eleven inches sheet. So what I will probably choose is this rightmost one, just because it seems like this, those labels are the biggest compared to year ones. So I will select this one, and the other advantage of this site is that I can download a Word template. Actually, I can download the template in different uh, formats, but if I select uh, View Label Templates. I can download a PDF or some proprietary software, I guess. I can also download the Microsoft Word template down here. So I'll select Microsoft Word template. And in here, I want this to be portrait. So I'll select download template and I will just open it in Word. Now, once the Word is started, what, what I have to do is I, can, I have to say I want to enable editing. And the other thing is that the format is .doc, which is like the old format for Microsoft Word. It, it shows you it's a compatibility mode. So I will probably start with going to file and setting, you know, this to be not, you know, the, the new, convert it to new. So I will select convert to new version of Microsoft Word. I will click OK. And now I am in the new format, which isn't visible because this is read only. I will have to select file save as to save it in the docx format but let's start with this document so what you can see are eight individual badges what's hard to see and hard to tell is how it, this document is actually put together so i will select this one so i can just zoom in a little bit and i will jump to home and select select the selection pane and you can see that we have eight different uh, shapes which are rounded rectangles if i hide those you know the text cursor is still here and that's because you know in, on top of those shapes, we have eight, di eight different tables. My, I don't have those tables visible. I can jump to design or layout, sorry, and I will select view grid lines. And now I can see that there are actually eight different tables in here. And they are done in a way that for each table, if I right click and select table properties, the positioning is done relative to page. So if I move with one table, the R1 will not move because it's, you know, it's hard coded, the position are hard coded, which is kind of nice. So let's start with the first label. I want to have a very standard kind of badge where there is a hello, my name is, the second line is the name, and there is also the bottom line with the background. So what I can do is I can select to split this cell. If I select split cells into three different rows, that probably works just fine. But as you can see, if I try to change the size, it will change the size of the entire table. So the, the size of the table changes, which is not what I want. So I will undo this and of course undo the uh, splitting and instead of splitting this way I will select this draw table function so what this allows me to do is to draw cells where I need them to be so I can make this a little bit bigger but the bottom one I can make pretty small like so I will unclick this draw table and I will ju just type in hello you know my name is whatever it, my name is my name is of course Václav okay I will select this and change the font to be Arial and maybe, I don't know, make this a little bit bigger, like like 16 or so. And this could be maybe, I don't know, 14. Maybe this could be a little bit bigger. Then I will make it bold and change the, the line spacing in the, in here. So line spacing options, maybe multiples of 0.8. So the, it's a little bit tighter. tighter. And I will change the font, uh, font color to be white. So font color to be white, but the background of the cell, which is inside the design, I will change the shading to be red. I already have this red color in here, but I will select more, more colors and just select it from this you know, uh, palette. So this one is what I like. I'll do the same for the bottom. I will set the shading to red as well. I guess I can keep those black lines, but in case you don't, don't like those, 
I will change the borders to no borders, so no borders. The only missing piece is just to make sure that the Václav is in a much nicer font, and for this I will use font name Luna, which you can download for free from dafont.com. Just click download and install it. I already have this installed, so I will just change the font to be Luna, Luna, and size, you know, a little bit bigger, I like, I don't know, 28, 36, 36 works fine. It seems like it's too much on the top, so I will open the line spacing options and I will change this to be single. That should fix it a little bit. Okay, so that's nice. So we have one batch done, but how do we get this into the other tables? Now this is kind of tricky because I cannot just copy this and paste it. It would paste the new, you know, in a, in a way that it's not um, useful very much. So what I have to do is I have to select the entire table and copy the entire table into clipboard. And we will be basically pasting this table into the second table. This way we don't have to worry about positioning and stuff. On the other hand, you have to know what you are doing because if I just paste it, you know, it works fine, it looks fine. There is this like empty line in here, which I can just delete using the backspace key. I'll press it one more time to get rid of it. And now I have a, like the original table and inside this original table there is this new table, which could be confusing because it's it's quite hard to tell that there are there's a table inside a table. So if I would want to make any changes, if I wouldn't want to put this, you know, change this content and just paste it again, I have to select or just click into the table. I will jump to layout and select the delete table, which will delete actually the table which I've just pasted. So this table is deleted. I still have this one more table, which is like the original table. I can delete one as well, just so you can see you know, this table is gone. I will undo this and undo this. And I can just keep pasting this table into all the other tables. So I will just select file or home, paste, get rid of this extra line, pressing the backspace key. And I will do the same here and four more times. Okay, and this one, this one, I'll press the backspace key. And last one, paste, I will press the backspace key. Okay, so we have now the name badge is done. What I can do is I can show the shapes just to make sure that everything is aligned. If I zoom in, I can see there's a little bit of gap down here. So maybe it's not done in a very precise way. I would have to try to print it on the actual paper to see if everything fits or not. If it doesn't, I can still just you know hide the shape and make sure that the table is a little bit bigger by resizing this column. Uh, this cell or maybe the bottom cell, I can resize the bottom cell as well. Now just because those tables are defined in the way that they are positioned relative to the page, I can change the table size and you can see it will not change anything else. It will not screw any other table, which is kind of nice. Now I do have eight different tags, but they are all holding my name, which is probably not what I want. I want all the, you know, each tag to have a different name. Now, how would I do it? Uh, it would be very similar as for my business card tutorial, and we will actually use the Excel spreadsheet to feed in those values, those names. So in, I will jump into the mailings, and what I can do is I can either create a new list or just use an existing one. So if you want to create a new list, you will select select recipients, recipients, and uh, type a new list, and it will just type the first name and new entry, the second name, you know, third name. You will just keep just creating the list and then when you are done you will select OK. But it would uh, save it to you in the MDB format which is you know like not very standard kind of format for data. I would prefer this to be an Excel spreadsheet so I will cancel this and I will cancel this one as well. And instead I will use my Excel spreadsheet which I've already used for the business cards as a template. OK, so here is my list which I've used for business cards. As you can see, I have the name, position, email, phone and initial. Those are the things, the parts which I actually don't even need for the name text. I really do care only about the first name. But I have the name in a format that it's first name with the second name together. So how would I split those into individual cells? And there are multiple ways. We can either use the data and uh, split to cells or text to columns function or we can just use a formula. And I guess I will use the formula this time. So I will name this column first name. And I need to find where is this empty space in between those two words. So I will use the function find, which for this text, 
or I want to find an empty space in this text. So find empty space in a cell A2 and it will give me number 7. So the empty space is on a position 7. And now I want to take a left part of the string of the, this text only and I only want to take 7 characters. So this will take only 7 characters and I will end up with my name. Now actually it will take 7 characters which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7th character is the empty space. So I don't want the empty space be, to be there. So I'll select minus 1 which will look the same but now the string doesn't contain the empty space. If I select, you know, minus two, you know, I am I'm missing the last character, so I have to select minus one. I will just copy this to all your cells, and I have the first name for each one. So I will save this and jump back to Word. And in here, I will select select recipients and select use an existing list. So select recipients, use an existing list. So I will find my Excel spreadsheet and just select. You know, it, it opens it for me. I don't know why, but I will just select open. And now I will select I want to use the sheet one, which is it's only the only sheet I have in there, of course. And I want to use the first row of data as, as headers. Okay, so I now have this loaded. And what I need to do is I need to select this part. And instead of this, my name, I will set, I want to insert a merge field, which will be the first name. So first name, it kind of, you know, changes the layout because the first name is, of course, very long. But as long as I click the preview results, you will see my name. I can even jump between different entries to jump between different names which are in the Excel spreadsheet. So I will do the very same thing for all the names. So I will insert merge field first name and I will do it six more times. And you will see, you know, everything looks kind of strange just because those labels are very, very long. But it doesn't matter because as long as I click the preview results, everything will be fine. And this even jumps to the next page. I guess that's fine. Okay, so if I select preview results, I do have now those names loaded from uh, Excel spreadsheet, which is great, and I can jump between different names. But I probably don't need eight different names on page because I'm not quite sure if there will be eight uh, people with the same name. So I want a different uh, each name tag to have a, di a different name. So what I can do is for each name, and I will turn on the turn of the preview results. I will click on the rules, and I will select I want the next record. So if I select next record, it will say me next record for the first name. If I turn on the preview results, you can see that first name is Václav, then there is Ada. If I jump to Excel, you can see it's it's patch, uh, matching perfectly. So I will do the same for each uh, entry. So rules next record, and I will do this at eight more times. So here and here, and of course a few more times until I will jump to the last name tag like so. So I have the name is going from Václav to Emma, so it should be eight entries, like so. And I have two more entries, so I can jump between different ones using those arrow keys. Now, if I jump between those, you will see it kind of like shuffles, it just moves. I'm not, ch I'm not jumping to the next page, like this should be the next page. But just for the preview, if I select the finish and merge and select edit individual documents for all the records, I will get the what I what I would expect, you know, like two pages on the first page there are eight records, and on the second page there are two records. So everything works perfectly fine, and we have now those name tags prepared for printing. So that's it. So that's how you create name tags in Microsoft Word. Maybe I will jump to the layout and turn off the grid lines. So that's how you create name tags inside Microsoft Word using data from Microsoft Excel and of course templates for from this website or maybe you you already have those you know, some kind of uh, labels on yours for yourself so you can just measure those and make sure that everything is aligned properly and that's it thanks for watching